This video is to show you how to set up a repository on github.com, how to connect it to your Visual Studio Code installation on your own machine, and how to add a Vadin template for our application into that so that it's synchronized between GitHub Online and your hard drive space. So the first step in this process, and this process assumes that you've been through all of the initial steps that we covered in class, where you would set up a GitHub account and you would download and install Git on your machine and you would configure Git inside of Visual Studio Code. If you haven't done those steps or if you missed the class, I would suggest you go and read the Git file that is available on um, the OneDrive. Okay, so what we do first of all, we click on New Repository. And so this would be for each new application that we'd be building that we wanted to care. I'm going to keep calling my demo. I'm going to give it a quick description. So I have a demo up for my video. I'm going to, oh, I pressed enter there when I shouldn't have, but that's okay. Um, I've created my repository now. Okay, so that's all created. Um, this URL up here is very important. I'm gonna come back to that in a moment because this is how I'm gonna link my Visual Studio code up to GitHub. So I'm gonna open up code And you can see here that I'm, in, I'm starting in an empty folder. Nothing's open and I have no project set up. So I'm going to go to my command palette. I'm going to type git clone. And this is where it's asking me, well, what repository do I want to clone? And I want to clone the one that I've just created. I want to create this link. <coughs> I'll go off and then it's going to ask me, well, where do you want this kept? And I want it kept on the desktop. And I have a folder called video folder and that's where I want to save my repository. And that's going to create and it's going to ask me do I want to open this and yes I do. So what it has done is it has created sorry, it has created a copy of my folder which has got nothing inside it. Um, if I were to create a new file here let's call it readme.md and say, this is my read, read me file. Okay, and save that. You will see that over on the left hand side here, my source control tab says that I have one change waiting to be synchronized. So one of the key elements here is the communication, the two-way communication between our machine and what's on our machine and what's been held on GitHub. As we update the folder, that we have linked on our machine, we need to push those updates to our GitHub. And if we were editing on a different machine, let's say, and we were synchronizing them to GitHub, we would need to download the newest version to this machine to make it synchronized as well. So I'm gonna to go to here. It's gonna ask me, well, what? put a message in here so we know what you did. So I'm gonna say add readme file. And I'm gonna hit the checkbox, or the check mark commit it and so that's saying yes I want to make that change I want to save that change and I want to synchronize it as well and so it will go away and note that the synchronization is down at the bottom here it's this spinning circle uh, when it's spinning it means it's synchronizing when it's not spinning it means the synchronization is finished and so if I go back here and I go to this you'll see that now I have a readme file and I have one commit here which was done 20 seconds ago and it was adding readme file so that's where I am. If I were to edit this, and save it again, it would tell me I have another change. My log of is going to be updates. I'm going to commit it by hitting the check mark. And now I'm going to synchronize to push that update across to GitHub. And that'll work for a moment too. And obviously the more files we're updating, the longer this is going to take. But for a small text file, it's usually pretty quick. And so now if I go to my demo, I can see that I've got two commits. I have my add my readme file and I have my updates. And if I were to look at the code, I can see my readme file now has two lines of information. So that's how the synchronization works. Now for us, 
a readme file is not enough. We need to have more information in there. And so the way we're going to deal with this is we are going to add our Maven archetype, our Vaden application into this folder, which will then get it synchronized up online. So I'm going to go to my command palette. I'm going to select Maven, generate from Maven archetype, because that's what we've been using all along. I'm going to start typing Vaden. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to pick the demo folder because that's where I want to store it. The demo folder is the folder that's synchronized and I know that because I can see the .git folder inside my um, Windows Explorer which says well this is how we know that git and github are linked in here and I'm going to go select and then the rest of the setup is very similar to what we've done so far. So the point of this video while this is setting up here is to illustrate the workflow we would go if we were to create a new application. Create our repository, step one. Clone our repository into Visual Studio Code is step two. Set up our Maven archetype in the same folder is step three. So I'm gonna say all the usual details here. Now once that's set up, you can see here that in my changes folder has popped up a lot of stuff, but I'm not gonna synchronize just yet because I actually wanna verify this is running before I set it up. So I'm gonna go into my files, I'm gonna open up Demer, I'm gonna open up this, I'm gonna open up this, I'm gonna open up my actual, um, my UI file, and I'm gonna go into here, and I'm gonna say, this is gonna be, the button now is gonna say GitHub demo. And all it's gonna print out is GitHub syncing. So I have I've edited my code slightly. Now, because I've edited my code, I want to verify that this works. And we can see down the bottom that it's still in the process of building. So we'll let it finish building. And we've seen from previous examples and from our class that as it's building, it's adding in all of our extra details we need to get it working. such as our target folder and our settings folder and so on. So, because I'm doing so many things on my laptop, it's just taking a little bit of time here to configure it, but it's at 80% at the moment, so it should pop up to 100% pretty quickly. So 88%. And we're at 100, right, everything's up and running. So I wanna check it's up and running, and we're gonna check it the same way we've checked everything else. I'm gonna see, am I in the right folder? No, I'm not, because I can't see the Palm XML, so I need to go into the demo application folder. And inside here, I can see my Palm XML, which means I can run my Maven Jetty run command. And that's going to go off and that's going to start up the Jetty server. It's going to deploy my code to that server so that I can verify that it's working. Okay, so it says my Jetty server has started. So if I go to my browser, I'm gonna open up a new tab, I go to my local host, I'll be able to see the updates that I've done, which was, this is a GitHub demo, and every time I hit it, it goes GitHub syncing, which has no, that's just a label, it's not actually doing anything, but it shows that I've changed it from the basic core application. If I were to go back to my GitHub here, and refresh this page, I can see that no new updates have been done because I haven't synchronized them with GitHub. So let's go do that now. I have 20 updates to do here. So I'm gonna click in. So I'm gonna say here, added Vaden app. 
they're all going to get synchronized. Now it's worth remembering on this that we are not actually um, putting anything on Azure as of yet. Okay, so my, my committing has worked and I need to synchronize. All this is doing is creating the link between Visual Studio Code and our and our and our GitHub account. There will be another video showing you how to do the Azure connection. Okay, so my code has been all synchronized and it has been committed. So if I go here and I refresh this page again, you will see that I don't just have README; I now have the demo app, which has all of my content in it. If I were to do one last thing, which is to go back to my folder, go to demo app, go clean, and then go package, it will build in all of the extra things I need for my um, for update, and it generates the wire file for us. Okay, so it's nearly complete there. We can see if we have a look over here that we've now five changes and as this finishes that's going to jump up to about 20. Hmm. It's even smaller than that. No, there we are, 24. So it's always worth waiting for a couple of seconds just to let our source control update. So now that everything's in there I say this was when we packaged project. Put that in. So I'm going to commit it first. So we're recording all of these changes, and now I'm going to synchronize these changes where it'll upload that content up to our GitHub account. this we've gone from a quite a small kind of half megabyte size project to about 11 megabytes in size and um, as all of our dependencies have been added in and because of that it just takes a little bit longer to synchronize this content and now our synchronization has worked so if I go back here I can see that I have got in my project I should have now four commits and if I have a look so I can see the history of who has updated the app so I have it adding a readme file then I added updates then I added my Vadin application and then I packaged the project and if I were to click into each one of these it shows me the changes that I've done that's not too relevant to us but what is relevant is if we go to the code we can now see all of the content. If we go into our target file, we see that we've got our wire file there. Okay, that's a small video on how to connect GitHub to Visual Studio Code for a project that we're about to begin. So in an assessment purpose, or if you were to ask to do this in class, this video would help you recap all those steps. As I pointed out at the start, it will not set up the initial connection but there is a text file or a Word document file on the OneDrive which goes through those steps for you.